Hello everybody and welcome back to Class of Friday where we look at a G.I. Joe classified series figure. This time we are looking at G.I. Joe classified roadblock from the Special Missions Cobra Island Target exclusive set. This figure was exclusive to Target and was the second version of roadblock after the standard release classified roadblock. Surprisingly the Target exclusive roadblock was not just this roadblock in a different uniform. There were other differences and we will take a look at those. Let's take a look at the packaging. This box has a window pane to show the figure and the accessories. It has the G.I. Joe Classified Series logo. This is Roadblock. It also has the Special Mission Cobra Island logo. We have some box art, and I think this works fine. It clearly shows the character and his uniform, his weapon. That all works okay. Uh, that art continues to the side where we have a close-up of Roadblock. This is a little different from what's on the figure. The figure has a long beard, but the artwork shows him with a short beard. A little bit more of roadblock in an action pose there. This is number 11 in the classified series, and on the back of the box we have the Cobra Island artwork that appeared on all figures in this Special Missions Cobra Island series. On this side of the box we have symbols that represent his specialties. This one means he is an electrician. This one is a garbage can. This means he has a strong Wi-Fi signal, and this is a robot angry eye. Now that we've looked at the box, let's take Roadblock out and take a look at the figure. Here is Roadblock out of the box, and all things being equal, I would say this is a pretty good looking action figure. However, all things are not equal, and I need to point out a couple things on this guy. This classified design of Roadblock does not take any inspiration from any vintage Roadblock figure, so I don't have a vintage Roadblock to compare it with. Let's start by looking at the figure's accessories. He includes this very large rail gun. It will fit in the figure's hands as you can see. It worries me a little bit putting it in the figure's hand though because this grip on the front here or in the the middle of the weapon uh, should fit in his left hand and it does but you kind of have to contort it a little bit to get it in his hand and I'm worried that that's going to stress the plastic. This rail gun is quite long. It is in dark gray plastic. It has lots of detail on it. It has a grip here at the top. It also has another grip here about in the middle for a second hand. There's also a grip here with a guard. I think you can use that, but it would be very difficult to get that in the figure's hand. It has blue highlights on both sides, and on this side it has a white tampo that says broiler. That's kind of cool. It also has a removable magazine. This does doesn't look like it fires traditional rounds, so this is probably a laser battery pack or something like that. This railgun is a reissue of the railgun that came with the first release of classified roadblock, that one being in silver plastic with red and blue highlights. Other than the railgun and the magazine, his only other accessory is his sunglasses, which are removable. You can take those off. They are very tiny. Now, having removable glasses like these is always a problem. These can easily fall off and get lost. However, there is a slot on his earpiece where these sunglasses will slot in there. That does hold them on a bit more securely, so I do prefer that over some of the other options. At least it will slot in. Let's take a look at Roblox's articulation. He has the articulation that is standard for G.I. Joe classified series figures, which is always good. And it's a little better on this figure because he doesn't have a vest or a big belt or anything that would hinder the articulation anywhere. So he has great articulation on the head, uh, all the way around, up and down. Uh, there's actually double articulation. There's a ball joint at the base of the skull, and there is a twist at the neck that is not very easy to do, but it is an extra point of articulation there. Uh, he has butterfly joints at the shoulders, a little stiff on mine, at least on the left arm, but his arm will lift up and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He has a twist at the bicep. He has a double jointed elbow. Uh, he has a twist at the wrist, 
on both wrists and on the right wrist he also has a hinge that the wrist will move in and out. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch and there's a great range of motion on that forward and back. He can limbo, that's impressive. He has a twist and a ball joint at the waist. He has a good leg split at the hip pop those legs back into their sockets good forward motion on the legs not so much backward motion he has a twist at the thigh cut he has double jointed knees he has a twist at the boot cut he also has hinged very tight hinges and rocker ankles. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Roadblock and I'll say it right off the bat, this is basically a recolored re-release of version one of Roadblock with a different head. And of course this one has a vest that covers the chest. Otherwise the parts are the same. While we're at it, I will point out other than the head, this is basically the same figure as Gung Ho. These classified figures are reusing a lot of parts and I guess that's okay. I will would rather they focus their budget on things that matter, but they do use a lot of generic parts. On his head, he has a black bandana, good detail on that. He has a communications earpiece over his right ear that has an antenna. He has a long brown beard. This is where I have to point out, this is not just Roadblock in a different uniform. His beard is longer and a bit grayer. This Roadblock, looks like he is a few years older than the first release Roadblock. That was a really long special mission on Cobra Island. He went in looking like this and came out looking like this. On his torso he has a black sleeveless t-shirt with a light gray digital camouflage pattern printed on it and a white G.I. Joe star logo across the chest. This shirt is painted on what would otherwise be a bare chest. For customizers this may be convenient. If you're wanting to do a custom bare chested figure, you could just use this one and not have to cut any vests off or anything and just paint over this bare chest. His arms are bare and muscular, as you would expect from Roadblock. No sleeves on that t-shirt. On his left arm, he has a Lion King tattoo. Roadblock is a big fan of the 90s Disney Renaissance. He has the Little Mermaid tattooed on his butt. On his right forearm, he has this black armor piece with straps that go around the forearm that could be removed but it's not really intended to be removable and that is a reuse of the accessory piece from Gung Ho. Same piece but the different colors. He has black gloves and just to reiterate those are the same arms as version one of Roadblock. He even has the same tattoo and I do appreciate that they didn't change the tattoo. One of the weirdest things in G.I. Joe is when a character has a tattoo that moves moves or changes size or shape. That's not how tattoos work. Why won't this come off? On his waist he has gray trousers with a texture pattern. I do like that cloth texture pattern. His Little Mermaid tattoo is right about there. He has a dark gray belt with a silver belt buckle. His legs have those gray trousers with the texture pattern with multiple pockets on each leg. He has seam lines and that looks really good excellent attention to detail. He has this dark gray grenade pouch thing strapped around his right thigh. This is another reuse of an accessory from Gung Ho who had the same piece strapped to his left leg instead of the right. He has a single black knee pad over the left knee. He has black boots with black shin armor strapped to the front of the boots. Again, that knee pad and the boot armor can be seen on the first release of Roadblock, but in different colors. That first release release of Roadblock had the gold armor that we saw on other Wave 1 G.I. Joe classified figures. Overall, I think this figure looks fine. It's a decent design. It looks good, but I do not like it as much as the first release of Roadblock. I guess I just don't get some of the design choices, like the head with the longer beard, meaning this is not just a uniform swap for Roadblock. This is the same guy, but at two different points in his life. This is an older Roadblock 
code block. The sculpt itself is good, and I really dig the communication device. I guess I just don't understand why. The t-shirt is also okay. It's an eye-catching design. I could see Roadblock wearing this on Casual Friday, but it's less tactical than the vest on the first release. I do think they made the right choice by making this a store exclusive. If you're gonna release a figure like this, it should not be a general released figure. There are better Roadblock figures out there, so if you are not a completist, you can safely skip this one and get the general release Roadblock. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Special Missions Cobra Island Target Exclusive Roadblock. I hope you enjoyed it. Check back with my channel on most Fridays for G.I. Joe Classified Series figure reviews. If you like G.I. Joe and you'd like to see vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews, make sure you subscribe to my channel and check out my huge back catalog of vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. I can only continue doing these videos with the support of my friends on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. You can get some special perks, and you can even get your name in videos like the names you see scrolling on the screen right now. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon with another G.I. Joe toy review. Until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.